Okay, everyone, I'm back. Uh, I'm doing another take uh, of this video. I was uploading it and I thought it took a long time to upload. And what has happened uh, that it turned to slow motion again. And in the middle of the video, so uh, I couldn't speed it up. It doesn't work. So I'm just going to um, try it again, I guess. So I promised I would show you some stuff that I did when I was a little younger. And uh, it's a lot of digital stuff. And um, well, I'll just show you. So what I used to do was um, with a program called Terrigen for the people that want to that want to do that I made these landscapes and these are not real of course because they're just virtual reality and um, it was a lot of fun um, fooling around with these uh, with this program like if you look at this one it's it's really like a beach but it's not real it's something I made up and as you can see it has the uh, the the wet wet sand and it has a uh, where the the water draws back it is so real and it really looks real can you see that where the water let's see if i can get the light out of it there you go so it was really um a lot of fun to uh, work with this program and it's still available it's free to download it's called terragen but you have to have a really really good computer because when you um, put all the um, the things into that program and when you want the image it will render for about two or three hours before you get the picture so it's a lot of work but it's a lot of fun to uh, do, do stuff with um, I also made one where I put myself in there that's me sitting on a rock and uh, it, I, I just like to uh, yeah I even had more hair <laughs> people always talking about my hair but look at that I think I had uh, about uh, twice the hair I have now but um, that's um, that's something that I really enjoyed doing for a long long time and there is a uh, website called um, Renderosity where I posted a lot of them especially all the Terrigens is just pictures but this this is one see that let me get the glare out a little bit but it's a, it's a program that you can really dink around with there's another one they're all glossy that's why they uh, shine so much that's a picture this is another one this is my husband a long time ago yeah, we took a trip to the Maladives and it was beautiful there. This is a real picture. This isn't out of Terragen. That's the island we went to. Doesn't exist anymore. They renamed it. It was Nakatfuchi, but now it's called something else. And that's me when I was a little bit younger. And this is me with a big, um, a really big background. Uh, this is uh, two big paintings, abstract paintings I made. That's me in front of it. Okay, then I uh, did some for uh, for a couple of customers. They uh, thought it would be uh, nice to have their child doing something they like, and I make a background totally out of the uh, made-up stuff. So I did a lot of that. This is another one I did. I still have a couple. So uh, that was a lot of fun. And it's different than just a portrait on, on the wall, right? You make it a little fun and people, uh, the kids really liked it. Then I did, uh, this is also digital. This is all done in Photoshop. And if you can see up close there, you can see straight through the uh, so-called cloth. And uh, I did a lot of these. I think about mm, 20, 30 of them. really really made some really big ones this is huge whoops as you can see my hand how big it is and then I put a lizard inside 
And here we have a caterpillar and a grasshopper. And I made it like they were eating through the cloth. And, um, you know, you can really um, put your creativity in something like this. I have a lot more, but I can't find them. But you can, if you really want to wanna check them out, um, most of them are on a site called renderosity.com. And my artist name on that site is Straight Bale. If you put this in, you'll find uh, my gallery. And there's a lot of stuff there. Um, there's also some uh, nudity. So um, there's a, a program called Poser that you can make people out of um, nothing. So a virtual reality people. So I did some of that. And when you make them, they don't have clothes on. So, <laughs> okay. So that, that was another one that I did. Then I did a lot of uh, watercolors. This one is huge too, as you can see, here's my hand. And uh, th this one has gone all a little bit yellowy. When I made it, it was much more vibrant, but as it goes with watercolor, you know how that works. And you can see here it's uh, made in uh, 95. So that is, we're now in 17, and another 5, that's 22 years ago, that's a long time ago. But I could sit there and do this, and um, uh, first did the watercolor, then I came in with one of those technical pens, as you can see, that I put in the little details, and it was kind of fun to do this. And I did this for quite a while. Then I have a whole map of uh, stuff that I did to get uh, get me into art school because you had to have one of these um, maps and you had to show them some stuff you could do and believe it or not this got me into art school. Um, I'll, I'll show it close up a bit so you can see how how fine this is. This was was with a technical pen. And I made a lot of these, as you can see. They're very, very detailed. And um, because, you know, when you want to get into an art school over here, you have to be, um, you know, they don't want to see you doing watercolors. That's not the thing that they really like. Uh, they want to see you do uh, something like this, something that you make up by yourself. And uh, that's just, you know, what they are looking for. They don't want someone that can really uh, paint realistically. That's not what they uh, like. They want someone that they can still form and that they can still sort of um, model into an artist, I guess. And it was a lot of fun because, you know, they learned... Um, what you learn is to let go. I just let go of that. <laughs> it's on the floor now. But I got a whole map full of these things and I did a lot of them. So that got me into art school. That was fun. And putting it down here. Let me see if I can find something else in my big map. And I did a lot of stuff, you know. A lot of, um, this is one I did with a lot of doodles on it. You know, just doing some, this is uh, done with watercolor and then you put some salt on the on the watercolor when it's still wet. And that makes some pretty patterns. This is one I made, just, you know, abstract thing. You just put some paint on, on the paper and just go with it. Let's see if I got any more. Oh yeah, I found another one, but that's... That's another one of those digital things. They all have the backgrounds because I like those backgrounds. It gives more a 3D effect. Let's see what I got in here. Oh, I got some more. There they are. I thought I lost them. See this one with the beetles on it? That is kind of cool. And I know it looks really um, easy, but uh, there's a lot of work that goes into these things. There's another one. A lot of work, because um, when you see this one, all these 
uh, holes in this sort of a fabric all the holes you have to um, do manually by hand so you take that all out and it's all done in Photoshop and I had a lot I don't know why I don't know where they all are but okay and let's see if I got any more to show you no oh, that's a lot of paper that's more paper more paper yeah that's about it yep and of course you saw my um, um the marbling stuff that I did you saw that in a in a recent video so this is pretty much um the uh, sort of um, s things I did, the creative things. Put them away. There we go. Now, in the in the previous video, I also um, went from this bit of uh, showing the art to um, making a difference in the uh, in the mediums because I get a lot of emails about the mediums. Um, I just did a video about them, but I keep getting those emails. So I'm going to name this one my art and um, which mediums to use. I'm going to do that again. And I'm going to keep it really short because there's only two things. So really make it easy. You have two sorts of paint. You have the fluid acrylics. You have the thicker, you know, like tube paints and this kind of paint. Everything that comes out of a tube is a, a lot thicker than this stuff, which is very, very, very fluid. So what I would do is always work with both because I like how this works and I like how this works. So I like both. But if you want to uh, choose one, then choose one. Say you're choosing this one. All you need with this is this. That is... Um, Overtrawl Floatrol. And this one is thicker than the other Floatrols that are on the market. And when you put um, one part paint to three to four parts of Floatrol, you have exactly the good consistency to pour. So this is the no-brainer. Everyone that uses this will get cells. So what you do, you get a cup, put paint in the cup, you eyeball it, and then you put three to four times as much Floatrol as you have paint. That's it. Nothing, nothing else. You don't have to do anything. That's it. You stir that stuff. When it's all stirred up, you got all your colors together. Then you put a couple of drops of uh, silicone in the uh, paint. I do it in all colors, but you can do it in one or two colors or all colors. That's all up to you. Then you put all those colors in one cup. You put your canvas on top, you turn it around, you release the paint, and bingo, you get all the cells. So this is the easy, easy peasy way to do um, the pouring, if you like the cells. Now, after you've done a couple of those, I'm sure you will get to a point where you want some more control over the pour. And it's closing the door. Now, that's when you get to this type of paint. So this type, not only the Windsor & Newton, but your Amsterdam acrylics, your um, tube paints, the paints, any paints, uh, craft paints. I've used some craft paints before, but anything that is not as thin as this, you need pouring medium. And that's where people get confused because they see me do one video with this and then I do a couple of videos with this and then I go back to here and I go back to there and then it gets confusing. So when you choose this type of paint, you need something to make it more fluid to let it pour. So at the moment, you've seen me use everything from PVA glue and all sorts of stuff, Liquitex pouring medium, you've seen me use it all. But at the moment, I am at a, at a place where I'm really, really satisfied with what these two do to the paint and how the cells react. So what I do is I put some of this paint in a cup, just put some in, doesn't matter how much, how much you think you're going to need. Then I take my pouring medium and I put in about 30%. 
Now, don't get upset if it's 25% or 33%, but aim for about 30%. I put that in the cup, then I put in up to 20% of the gloss medium. And any gloss medium will do. I got two types, but any will do. Then I put up to 20% in the, in the cup with the paint. And then I start stirring to make it really, really smooth. Then when I have that all smooth, I put in one tablespoon of Floetrol. And why I do that is because it gives you a little bit more definition in the cells. And I'll show you in a bit. And then I'll put a little squirt of polymer medium in there, just, you know, to make sure I got all the binders in there. Then when that's really, really smooth, because I really stir it until it's totally smooth, then I start adding a little bit of water. And the thing is that um, the first uh, squirt of water, I'll do a little bit more. Then I'll stir it till it's smooth. Then I'll come in with very, very little squirts of water and keep stirring, stirring, stirring until it's totally smooth. Then I add the silicone. Then I pour. Now, that's the difference between this one and this one. If you're someone that, you know, you don't have all that time to mix paints, because when I mix seven colors of this type of paint, I will be mixing for about an hour, hour and a half, sometimes two hours, because there's a lot of mixing involved. If you don't have all that time on your hands, then you go for the Vallejo fluid. So then it's just a squirt, three to four times this in, it, in the cup, and you're ready to go. And that goes a lot faster. If I do seven colors of Vallejo, I'll be ready in 10 to 15 minutes. If I do seven colors of the thicker paint, I'll be stirring for about an hour and a half. So that's the difference. So it's really up to you what you want to do, um, what you want to, uh, how much time you want to dedicate to your art. Now, the other difference is that when you do Vallejo, you almost don't need a torch. This is just a normal chef's torch. As you can see, it's used for the, uh, uh, the sugar on a creme brulee to make it brown. So with this one, you almost don't need it because it's so thin. When you pour, all the cells will be there. And because it's so thin, the silicone comes to the top pretty fast. So then torching will do almost nothing. Now, if you squish this, then you can torch because you've squished it all between and there's not enough fluid to release the silicone. So that then you have to use the torch. But if you do a canvas pour, you'll see that you already, as soon as you release the paint, you get all those beautiful cells. Now, after a while, when you've been using this, you'll know exactly the thickness of the paint. So if you move from this, you move to this, it'll be a little bit easier if you've done the, the fluids before. This gives you just a little bit more control of where your uh, cells are going to be. And that's what you've seen um, in my videos before. Sometimes I, I torch the whole thing and sometimes I just torch where I want some cells to appear. And I'll get a painting to show you. I had a painting, but now it's gone. I don't know where I left it. That is weird. Oh, there it is. Nah, that's not a good example. Oh, I got it. Okay, so why I add the Floetrol is because when you add Floetrol, you get more of these cells. You see a color in the middle. You see a line around it more double lines and that's what I sort of like the most. So the Floetrol in this thicker paint makes your cells more um, defined. It gives them a, 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 like you see here, it gives them some sort of a halo and that's what I really like. So that's why I put Floetrol and I only put a little bit in there after it's all uh, smooth and done, about a, t uh, a tablespoon in half, half one of these cups. These cups are 180 milliliters, so in half a cup I'll put a tablespoon of Floetrol to make those cells really pop. Now, the polymer medium, 
Um, I don't really see much of a difference, but because it's polymer medium, it has a lot of binders, and I just think it's better for the paint. That's why I squirt a little bit in there. And, you know, these are pretty cheap. In my shop, they go for 8 euros, and um, it's half a liter, and it you can use it, I don't know, for I think about 50 paintings. That's how much you use in the, in the paint. So it's, that is really cheap, but I like to add it because it helps with all those binders. Well, guys, that's it. Straight after this one, I'm going to do one in Dutch because I get a lot of Dutch people asking me about the uh, mediums. So um, Saturday I'll be doing new pours and I'll make a couple. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.